All right, guys, here we are again, ready for tutorial number seven. We're actually getting close to the end of our tutorial series for 2018. We're making good progress, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite things to do in the game, which is Strek Design. Strek Design is one of the more inspired parts of this game. I think that they could go much further with this if they added it into... For instance, uh, ships, you know, being able to customize how a ship looks or, you know, what sort of features a ship has, such as more speed and less less cargo capacity or vice versa. Anyway, well, we're not going to complain about that because it's nothing we can do at the moment. So let's get right into it. So for Strek Design, you need a few things. You need an R&D. Well, you only need one thing, really. You need an R&D uh, research and development garage. You can build this in both a multi-purpose settlement and a castle. In our case, we're using a castle because uh, we just are. And when you build it in a castle, it's already upgraded to maximum level. It says level one down here. It's actually level three if you were to put this on a multi-purpose settlement. This here, this R&D center, this would be the third level on a multi-purpose. Whereas it's a first level on a castle, I could actually upgrade it and add in uh, a little bit more health and stuff, but uh, it's not really worth it to upgrade it on a castle, to be honest with you. Anyway, um, so you need your R&D. You can also do this in a city. If you're a new player and you just want to play around with Strike Design and see how it works, uh, the, <coughs> the developers have actually done something very nice for us all, and they've added in um, every single building, one of every type of building to every city. So, or to every capital city, rather. So you can actually go to your capital city or another capital city and design a strek. Just look for a building that looks like this. Uh, sometimes uh, the human ones look a little different, but they're generally this size, and you'll be able to you'll be able to find one that's uh, that size. And just if you mouse over different buildings down on the bottom right here, you'll see the names of them. So you'll eventually run into one that says R and D if you're in the city. Or if you're like me, you'll have a castle and do it there. So we're going to do it in the castle, and uh, let's proceed. There are three types of streks. There are single-seaters, double-seaters, and five-seater strekolites. Uh, the difference is single-seaters, think of it like a P-51 Mustang in World War II, or a uh, Wildcat, or you know one of the other single-seatered planes. Um, they're mainly for interception and fighter destruction, or in our case, since there isn't the World War II theme, uh, for dragon destruction and double seaters are they're actually from another era think of them as world war one like um, not the sop with camel but other other world war one biplanes where you had uh, if you ever seen indiana jones for instance one of the movies I, I think it was the last crusade he's in the his father's in the back of the plane and he's shooting the machine gun at the enemy fighter that's on their tail he accidentally shoots off the tail of their of their fighter. It's great scene, great movie. Well, that's that's what the two seater Strex are. You're in the single front seat, and then an NPC guy is in the back of the Strex. They're a little bit slower, a little bit more ponderous, but they can hold a lot more, and they can defend from behind. They're really good for orbiting your ship and shooting at dragons as they come in. Then, of course, the third is the five seater Strex. This is like an old school World War One bomber where um, these things could hold maybe one ton of, of ammunition. N nowadays, you know, you can hold multiple, many tons of ammo, but back in those days, you couldn't. And uh, these are just huge biplanes. They're very heavy. They can hold 100-pound bombs. They can hold uh, torpedoes. They can hold all sorts of cool stuff that you can drop. And uh, they're really only for bombing. They're not for fighting at all. They're terrible at it. So today, let's go ahead and design a two-seater Strek because single-seaters are uh, kind of limited in what we can put in them. And actually, you know what? No, let's do a single-seater because if you're if you're without a settlement and you're watching this, you want to be able to do this alongside me. You can only do a single-seater in the city, sadly. So let's go click on single-seater Strek. Now we have three types for the orcs. If you're human, you get the gargoyle. Uh, and two others I can't remember the name of, but uh, the orcs get the Verg, the Craner, and the Drike. In this case, let's go for the Drike. I think it looks kind of cool. It looks like a, a mix between a Mustang and 
I don't even know, an old late World War One era wooden fighter. So we click on the Drake. We come here, and it says Drake Standard. We can change the name of this. This is the variant of our ship. So if we want to name it something cool like Drake Dragon Hunter Slayer. How about Dragon Slayer? Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And uh, <clears throat> once you save this design, it saves as Drake Dragon Slayer. So if you've saved a bunch of designs in your R&D, you can mouse over each one and find the one you've been looking for. You can make as many copies as you want. If you've ever played EVE Online, this is kind of like the Blueprint system. It's a very rudimentary, basic version of Blueprints in EVE, um, where you can make X number of copies, except in this case, you can make infinite copies. So here's where we're going to just go down the list of what each of these means after I do the weapons. So let's start with weapons. First, second, third, and fourth mount point. Now, it's hard to see on your screen. It's hard to see on mine, but you can see one, two, three, four, and they actually have a five here, but there's there's nothing there. So the first mount point is our front left gun. If you remember, World War One fighters had guns that were locked to the gearing system in the engine, and as the propeller turned, the, uh, the gearing would make it so that when you fired a machine gun, uh, each shot would go between the propeller blades, even if they were spinning at, you know, 3,000 RPMs. So their gearing would allow that to happen. I think that was a design that originated in France, actually. France was ahead of the game when it came to fighters back in the First World War. So, uh, there's different weapons you could put on here. There's the Margood energy gun. I don't really know if that's even in the game anymore, or if that's something you can get. So we're going to skip that. Um, the bee thrower, which I've discussed in other videos, is the uh, quote-unquote heat-seeking machine gun where it never misses, but it's rare that you're going to get enough ammo to use this, so we're definitely not going to put that in. And the 150 is the lowest caliber. If you want to save room on your strike, you want to put these on because they're very low cal, therefore they're very, very um, easy to fit a lot of them on. If you've ever, if you know like the Spitfire from World War II, which had, I believe it was six cannons, three on each each wing, that you can go with that design with the 150s. And then as you work your way through, 140s, 120s, 110s, and there's different variants of the 110s. You've got your 300, which is your basic 300 rounds a minute. You've got your 300 M3, which is a little bit more accurate, but requires a base to make. You've got 1200 M3s, and that's about it. So there's three variants of the machine guns. In our situation, let's go ahead and do a 1 slash 40 machine gun blizzard 300. That's the basic 140. It's a little gun, but pretty good. Let's do another 140 on this one. Standard 300. And there's nothing special about it. It's just a standard 140. Ammunition, this is the number of rounds per gun. So let's increase this. Yeah, I don't know. Let's say uh, 240. 240 shots per gun. It's a probably an interceptor so it's short range it's going to go out it's going to shoot a little bit and it's going to come home now we can add more guns let's just play around with this i don't know if this is possible but we'll see let's say we wanted to load this sucker up with just so it could just plow the road of the skies with uh one two three four five six 140 machine guns each with 240 rounds i doubt we can fit all this but we'll find out uh, okay so here we are we got our four machine guns we're way overweight, which I'll explain, or overspeed, which I'll explain in just a second. All right, so now let's work our way from the top. Engine model. Engine model determines how big the engine is in your fighter. Pretty straightforward. As I click over, the model slowly increases. You'll notice down here, so does the, the maximum speed, because the bigger the engine, the faster it will go. However, you'll notice this number, weight of the equipped striklet, is increasing too as I increase the, the engine size. That's because, obviously, bigger engines are heavier, right? So for now, let's see if we can get away with an M2. Probably not, but we'll see an M2650. This is the low-end, cheapy M2 engine. Now, we'll come back to that. So planks, plywood panels, and sheet iron. This indicates what the structure of your Strek is made from. Planks being like wooden planks. Think of like balsa wood or some cheap wood uh, that makes your plane really light. Plywood panels being a little bit stronger, although in reality, if you put plywood on a plane, it's not going to fly very well at all. It's going to be super heavy, but uh, a little bit stronger. 
And then sheet iron is pretty straightforward. It's think of it as aluminum. I don't think it's really sheet iron. And uh, this will make your plane much faster, but also much heavier. And uh, it'll have a uh, lower top speed. So it's faster in the sense that it cruises at a higher speed, but it isn't faster because it's just faster. So let's start with doing just all planks as much as we can anyway. You could do 80%. You know, lower those. Okay, 80% planks. If I just did my my plane made of mostly wood, I have 615 weight allowed. And the weight of everything on it at the moment is 819. Unfortunately, that won't fit. So I'm going to have to play with the sliders a bit. Turn up this little guy here. See if we can make it out of plywood. All right, so 912 out of 925. We can fit that. However, now is where we explain where just having the right weight does not make it a good strek. So down here, cruising speed, 209. That means it has to fly 209 miles an hour out of its max 226 just to stay level. That's not counting climbing. So basically, we'd have to take off from uh, a, a uh, like a mammoth or some other, some other uh, airship and just drop down until we landed somewhere else. Like we could never climb back and return to our ship in this little ship. So, in order to solve that, there's a few things we can do. Wing area. We can increase the wing area easily. Holding shift and clicking plus. If I don't hold shift, it increases by single units. Very boring. So, let's just hold shift. We're going to click it all the way. Think of this like a Spitfire. You know, big banana wings. It's got huge wings now. Its cruising speed is lower. Its top speed actually hasn't changed, but normally that would lower a little bit. And now we're at 83%, which means we use 83% of our overall power just to stay in the air. That's still not enough. So let's lower it down some more. Angle of the wing attack means um, basically the angle of your wing. It's angled uh, kind of like flaps where it angles upwards a bit. So it creates more lift, but it also creates some drag slowing you down. We want to increase this to max. Now watch as I click this, the cruising speed gets lower because it can now cruise at a lower speed and stay in the air. Um, think of it like uh, like a parachute. You know, the bigger the parachute, the less speed you need to uh, stay afloat or not a parachute, a uh, like a hang glider or uh, paraglider, you know, things like that. So as I increase the angle, now we're at 69%, but our cruising speed is much slower, 168 so we can go slower and stay in the air, and we're only using 69% of our available power. That's pretty good. Actually, anything 70% and under, 70% is your bar. If you're over 70%, don't be fooled. Don't think that that means that you still have a bunch of stuff to spare to climb. You'd be surprised at how little fighters can climb at 80% power. They can hardly climb at all. So anything above 70 is more or less a wash. You need to try again. So, okay, we're good here. Basic stabilizer angle, that is not really necessary. Um, that's better for, for bombers. Stabilizer determines how far up or down your plane um, points by default as the air passes over the wings. We don't want to change that. It's generally good where it is because your plane will level out no matter what speed it goes. It will level uh, to the horizon eventually. So it's gen I, I just usually don't touch this. Now, amount of fuel, this is a big deal. Right now, I've got the default amount of fuel, which is 10 minutes of fuel or range 20. That's 20 miles in the game or yards. Remember, we, we can't really seem to figure out what the distances are. Um, so my compass here on the bottom left is about 20 miles. We'll just call it miles so we don't have to worry about it. Well, it's about 20 miles wide. So I could fly from right here on the right side of my compass to the left before running out of fuel. Probably less, though, in my experience. Because you gotta get accounted for all the ups and downs, left and right turns, rudder movement, things like that. Everything uses fuel. So we're gonna increase our fuel to 60. Let's see how far we get that. 16 minutes of fuel. That's still a little. Yeah, that's this. It's a little rough. Uh, I'd rather have 25 minutes to tell you the truth. But that puts us at 72 uh, percent. Now we're overweight first of all because we're at 972 out of 925 because fuel weighs weight i mean fuel isn't free um so now we've got to drag our plywood panels a little bit more 
You gotta be very careful here. 993 out of 985. It's really good to get as close as humanly possible. You want to just milk this for every bit you can. So from the looks of it, we we now are overpower. It's probably not going to fly very well. If I lower my ammo down, it doesn't even make much of a difference. 1% because ammo is super light. That's a good thing about ammo. It means you can put a ton of ammo on your fighter without really negatively affecting it. So let's see what happens if I get rid... Actually, how about this? Although I don't really like the 150s, if we really just want to see a whole bunch of machine gun fire, we can exchange these for 150s, and I think we can get away. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at how much lighter it is with 150s, because they're crappy little guns. Look at that, 65%, so now we got lots of climbing power. We have a little bit of extra power here, so we can actually pull those plywood panels down because remember we want to get every bit of speed ease of flight that we can 882 out of 885 Woo, that is close so now we're a little bit slower 165 is our cruising speed but look at all this range 165 to 232 we can play around in in that speed so we've got a lot of extra power to climb if we want to get out of here and since this is a dragon slayer we want to be maneuverable and be able to dip and dive and move around now we're at 100 ammo, so let's increase that to 200. This 150s, their ammo weighs almost nothing. How about 300? Okay, 300, we've got enough fuel for 28 minutes. Again, that's because we're a little bit lighter, so we use less fuel to stay aloft. And uh, that should be good. Okay, all right, so here is what we'll do. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just see what happens with with our setup here. We're good. Everything here is good. Nothing needs to be changed. Everything's maxed on the angle. Oh, and uh, one other thing I didn't mention, aileron, rudder, and elevator. This is the, the area that these cover. So if you increase like your rudder area, your rudder is bigger. You won't see it visually. It looks the same, but your rudder will... Um, your rudder will take up more space and technically it should make you more maneuverable. I have found that it makes you too maneuverable and your ship just kind of goes all over the place. So I also tend to leave these alone, but you're welcome to play around with them. Last but not least, which I didn't mention, is your cargo compartment. You can increase this to put things like crystals on, uh, to put uh, a grappling hook on for a capture ship. That was in our previous tutorial to show you what that looks like. So if you're making a capture ship, you definitely need a two-seater strek. You need to put um, 1,030 cargo on it, 1,000 being for the grappling hook, and 25 of that being for the crystal that you're going to bring with yourself to put on your ship that you've captured because it has virtually no health. Uh, right after I took that video, actually, we captured another ship, a Boar 100, and <laughs> Retrofire, who was helping me with the video, he shot me down on accident with one stray bullet. So as soon as I captured it, I got shot out of the sky. So yes, you definitely want to bring a crystal with you if you're doing a capture strike. But we're not doing that. We are just doing a dragon slayer. So let's just bring one crystal with us, which weigh, they weigh 25 a piece. So this goes up in increments of 10. So here we are with a size 30 cargo compartment. Oh no, we're overweight. So let's do a little tweaking. 924 out of 925. How do you like that? Our ship is a, a bit less maneuverable now because it's at 66% power. And changing the ammo doesn't make a single difference. So let's go with this to see what happens. Okay, so where to go? Well, it went right down here to the warehouse. And there it is, Dragon Slayer. Drawing, Drake, Dragon Slayer 5, XB Walker. Total in the warehouse, there's five, because I have five other ones here. And it's a single-seater battle strickle it. Now, if I want to make it, what do I need? I need I need all my components here. So you can see on the right, I need 49 boards. I need 184 plywood panels, 55 sheet iron, an M2650 engine, which I happen to have. And then six 1-50 machine guns. I don't have any, so I need to make six real quick. In your case... Don't don't do what I'm about to do here because it's uh, <laughs> it's gonna cost you a fortune. Uh, but I'm doing this for the purpose of the tutorial. I hope you are happy. Uh, okay, so 
clicking on the foundry. I'm going to make 150s really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me go back. Let me just fast forward these. Ugh, that's expensive. I never fast forward your stuff, by the way. This is only for the tutorial. Fast forwarding, it's so expensive and it's totally not worth it. Um, okay, so now we've got enough to make our strek. Now we're gonna click on it. If you're doing this in the in the regular settlement in like the city, uh, it just it works off the same principles. Just make sure you have all the materials to build your strek. Thankfully, they're very easy to build. Interestingly, they're super expensive through NPCs, but if you make them yourself, they're worth almost nothing. They're super cheap. So I'll create strekle it. it takes 58 minutes to create one strek. If you're doing this for a mammoth or some other ship with a whole bunch of hangar slots, this is going to go overnight. It's a lot of work. Again, we're going to fast forward, though, for the purpose of this tutorial. Now, I fast forwarded the production, so where does my strike go? It goes to my hangar. If I click on hangar down here by hitting K with my R&D garage selected, there is my strike that I made, Dragon Slayer XB Walker. So now all that's left to do really is load it onto a ship and go. So this is, I'm gonna show you that too because I'm gonna try to bunch this all into one tutorial. Uh, let's go ahead and, and do my Mammoth, my favorite ship in the game by far. In fact, they just buffed it bef between this and my last tutorial. They patched it so the Mammoth can now hold 25 Strex, which is awesome. It's, it's a carrier now. And I've already got a few Strex. I'm, I'm slowly building my way up towards having an awesome um, Air Force. So we're going to take your strike here. After you've selected your ship and it pops up above your settlement, you just select your strike, drag it over. From R&D to Mammoth, yes please. And now if I click on my Mammoth, and the hangar's still open actually, but I open my hangar, there it is, my Dragon Slayer. Now, this is not the end of the tutorial, because now... We have, what are we going to do? I mean, how are we going to fly this thing? There's no fuel in it yet, and there's no ammo. So, <laughs> excuse me. So we need to fuel it. Uh, now, the type of engine that it uses is M2, which is, I think that M2 is best for I'm in it. Let me just verify. You can verify yourself, too. Uh, engine production, M2 series engines. Okay, the M2 says it uses Imanit, which is the first level of fuel right after Ima. Pretty easy stuff to get. Let me make a whole bunch of Imanit, because I think I might be out. Oh, no, I've got 135,000 of it. <laughs> so you're going to drag your fuel. Let's assume you bought this on the market, or you've made it yourself. You're going to drag your fuel from wherever you're storing it onto your ship. Remember, Strex use very little fuel, so you don't need much. I'm just going to put 1,400 of it on here. Should be more than enough. Uh, I'm going to use 150 ammo, obviously, because I'm using a 150 gun. In fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Not actually cheating, but let's do this. Let me make some 150 charges, armor piercing charges. Oh, I only need to make one because, geez, 6,000 rounds for one run of it. Should be more than enough for my strike for the next thousand years. Okay. Now I'm gonna find that ammo wherever it was. Uh, looks like it went to this warehouse. Put it in my strike every or in my my mammoth. Everything that you need to put in your strike needs to go onto the ship that it's assigned to. So now my mammoth has ammo, and it has fuel, and I just happen to be carrying crystals, so I'm just gonna use one of these. Now, all that's left to do is arm up our strike. So we click on our strike. We go to fuel. The next big thing in food was stuff that's Sorry, advertisement. Um, I'm going to go to fuel here. I can choose any type of fuel that is on my mammoth or in the settlement that my mammoth is docked at. And uh, in this case, we're going to do I'm in it, obviously, because that's the efficient fuel. Um, so we're just going to click right here on I'm in it. Bam, 100 units of I'm in it. It's going to take 48 seconds. There are skills that increase and decrease the speed. Um, if you want to look on your skill bar, they're right here. There they are. This whole skill tree right here. As you increase these skills, like leadership, you can have more strikes under control at once. Strike lets repair faster with repair skill. 
reload gives you more ammo recharge there we go okay all right anyway back to what i was doing sorry i got distracted now, while it's doing its refuel, you'll see the re... Oh, it's done. Okay, so after some of this refuel, we can do ammo. We can queue both up. Don't worry. So we're going to queue up 150 armor-piercing ammo. That's going to take a lot longer. That takes three minutes. Uh, you can get you can get you find ways around this by getting planes that are big enough to fit auto-loaders. Auto-loaders will automatically reload ammo up to 1,000 rounds at a time, almost instantly. But as far as I've found, uh, only the five-seater Strex are big enough to hold autoloaders in the cargo compartment. They're like 3,000 pounds. So, uh, you know, it's up to you. In this case, that's why you want to have a lot of available ammo space from the get-go because you can't really reload in the air. You have to land back at your Mammoth or whatever ship you're using in order to reload. So we're loading it with ammo right now. Um, everything's good to go. All that's left to do is put a crystal on our Strex. So if we click on our Strek and we go to hold or cargo, whatever you want to call it, that opens the, it says warehouse, but it opens the hold for the Strek, the cargo compartment. Now we open up our ship. We're in the settlement, so you see the flight center here, but normally you would just see this. We're going to drag one of these crystals onto our Strek. And even though it disappeared, it looks like it did work. I click on the Strek now, go to the warehouse, there is that one crystal. I can click the crystal and I can click on move, which is, you've seen this in a previous tutorial for the ships. It's the same thing for Strex. Now my tiny little Strex with virtually no health has a million extra health with just this one crystal. <laughs> so it just went from being a little flimsy one seater to being a God mode one seater that they have to take a million health out of for it to go down. In PvP, of course, it's not too hard because one thing of lightning will, will do, uh, uh, I think, a million damage. So, yeah, um, still not good for being invincible, but it's great for fighting dragons. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take off in our mammoth. We've got everything we need. Okay, and we're just going to... Um, I happen to know that there are dragons that spawn right over here by my base. So we're just going to sneak on over. And we're almost done reloading, so that'll actually work out pretty well. Okay, flying right about here. I know that the dragons pop out of the ground right up here. So we're going to attempt to fight dragons in a strike. It's not easy to do. To tell you the truth, it's way better to let the AI do that let the AI fight the dragons but for the fun of this video tutorial I'm going to show you guys anyway okay we're coming up on dragon hill let's call it okay this should should summon some dragons in fact you know what let me do something kind of fun <laughs> you remember our our dragon hunting tutorial using the dragon horns so i don't use dragon horns in your cities because the cities capture or the cities do most of the aggro and i kind of miss out on a lot of kills <laughs> we're gonna do it because it's funny and we're gonna see a lot of dragons come up in a moment here i'm blowing the dragon horn <laughs> this is something i would never do normally um i'm going to go ahead and oh look at that that there must be npcs overhead yep there are and they're just wiping out the dragon settlements from above all right so we're gonna go ahead and take off in our strek see if we can get in on that action we go to our hangar on our ship make sure you halt your ship otherwise you're gonna have to go catch it later um we're gonna go to our hangar we're gonna find the strek we want to fly which is this little guy here not all ships can hold all Strex, by the way, so make sure you check the description of your ship to see what kind of Strex it can hold. Uh, Mammoth can hold single and doubles. Most other ships can just hold single, or uh, in the case of wooden ships with sails, those can hold doubles. 
All right, release the strekelet. Okay, this is important here. Take off in strekelet means you take off in it. Release means you give the AI control over it and the AI flies the strek. And it looks like another ship here on the bottom right, just like you would if you had a fleet of ships with you. We're gonna take off in it. May God have mercy on our souls. And yes, it's really loud to fly the strike. All right, so basic control is WSAD, if you've ever played any game. Now, I'm not touching the controls right now, and I'm at full speed. And as you can see, my ship is more or less leveled out. It's kind of climbing, actually, but um, that's because it has so much speed. So you see on my speed indicator where the green is, is around 60 to 70%. That's because my engine at 69 or I think it's 67% power is uh, gonna be at cruise velocity. So we're gonna try to kill a dragon. I highly doubt we're gonna be able to. Manual strike flying is cool in theory, but very freaking hard because it's WSAD controls. There's no smoothness to it at all. getting fired oh got him <laughs> ah, look at that that's awesome all right so that's uh that's our little 150 with armor piercing if i was doing that with regular ammo man i probably wouldn't have scratched that dragon ap ammo is pretty much the only way to go with 150s nailed him so that's that's this okay so now if we want to return to our ship all we got to do, well, there's two ways to do it. We can automatically do it. We can hit return to settlement or ship that it took off from, which is simple. We just click on that and it will, it's going to autopilot, as you can see. We can click on land and then click on anywhere that we want it to land that happens to have a settlement or happens to have a runway. Um, but, uh, and by the way, I, I strongly recommend you use the return button. Manually returning is not easy at all. And uh, again, land. And then, of course, there's glide, which you've seen in other tutorials. Glide allows you to go very, very fast. You can do it in a strek too, and thankfully, you can go different directions using glide without disengaging it. But uh, then you're flying your strek at a million miles an hour. Good luck with that. You know, notice that when it's doing its return, it was uh, staying at cruise speed because it's not trying to climb. That would be a waste of fuel. Here we go. There we go. We landed. Simple as that. So flying a strike, very fun. Uh, very difficult, but very fun. Killing dragons with a strike, also very fun. And what I'm hoping is the developers start to put more time and effort into the uh, con control scheme for the strikes and add in gamepad support rather than you having to go in and and mess around with, with the coding and doing it yourself and making it much more smooth. But in the meantime, Strex are fun. They're huge force multipliers for your ship, depending on what you want them to do. Uh, like I have a Strex here that's a single shot. It uses missiles and it shoots uh, four missiles at once, which is 400,000 damage. So uh, if you get 25 of these on your mammoth and you launch them all at once, <laughs> you're gonna wipe out just about everything. So here we are, we're gonna, we're gonna fight these dragons, but I'm gonna end the tutorial here. If you have any questions on Strex, you are welcome, of course, to ask me in game. I'm XB Walker, as you can see up here. Um, you can ask me on Steam. I'm some other variant of XB Walker, but I think I'm the only one. Or you can ask me on the Steam forums, and I will see you out there, guys. Thanks a lot.